Hi guys, welcome to Master Med Academy. If you are new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button below and press the bell icon to receive future updates on our new and upcoming videos. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram. So guys, today we're going to be talking about DeGeorge syndrome. So DeGeorge syndrome is a syndrome where we have a deletion of a fragment of chromosome number 22. It occurs in the long arm of the chromosome which is Q and the area is 11.2. Approximately 30 to 40 genes are deleted here and that leads to underdevelopment of pharyngeal pouches. Now exactly speaking, it's the third pharyngeal pouch and underdevelopment of fourth pharyngeal pouch. Now, TBX gene is a gene that is present in chromosome 22 which is responsible for development of pharyngeal pouches. Now it's very high yield to know what are the derivatives of pharyngeal pouches. So we have development of a third pharyngeal pouch and we also have a fourth pharyngeal pouch development. So let's understand what's the derivative of the third pharyngeal pouch. Now in third pharyngeal pouch we have the development of the thymus and we have inferior parathyroid glands development here. Whereas in fourth pharyngeal pouch we have superior parathyroid gland. We know parathyroid gland is responsible for calcium homeostasis. Now what are the signs and symptoms of DeGeorge syndrome? Now in DeGeorge syndrome we have thymic hypoplasia or aplasia. Now hypoplasia is decreased thymus gland or there is no thymus gland development and because of that it would lead to decreased T cells and eventually that would lead to recurrent infections. The second is the underdevelopment of parathyroid gland, parathyroid hypoplasia or parathyroid aplasia. Here we have decreased parathyroid hormone and that would lead to decreased calcium in our body. The third thing to remember is cardiac defects. Now what kind of cardiac defects? We could have tetralogy of fallow, we could have conotruncal abnormalities and many more. The fourth is the intellectual disability. The fifth one is abnormal facies. The child may have broad nose, low set of ears and other abnormal features. And the last one to remember is the autoimmune disease and it could be rheumatoid arthritis. So let's see what I say in my text. I say that DeGeorge syndrome is also known as 22Q11.2 deletion syndrome. And here we have under development of third and fourth pharyngeal pouches, right? Now we also have a absent thymic shadow on chest x-ray. Why? Because we don't have thymus. And why don't we have the thymus? Because it's either hypoplastic or it is aplastic. I'm gonna be showing you a picture in a moment. So this is a child with uh, DeGeorge syndrome and as you can see in the picture usually in just one glance you cannot uh, deduce and diagnose the patient as uh, DeGeorge syndrome because in the first glance this child does look a bit normal but you have to very carefully see the features the facial features and then you have to deduce the diagnosis so in this child this child has basically uh, less width of the eye opening has broad nose has a low set of ears and maybe this child might have less number of teeth. So these are some of the abnormal faces or abnormal facial features that we see in DeGeorge syndrome. Now what are the signs and symptoms? Now first we have hypocalcemia and because of that there is a phenomenon called tetany and basically tetany are a set of involuntary muscle contractions that occur in our body. So this is tetany and this is due to uh, less calcium in our body. The next is T cell deficiency and if when we have uh, less T cells of course our adaptive immunity is not working so we have recurrent viral and fungal infections. Third are cardiac defects. Now what kind of cardiac defects? Basically they involve conotruncal abnormalities like interrupted aortic arch which is 50% seen in patients, persistent truncus arteriosus 34% seen in patients and the last is tetralogy of phthalate and VSD. Now this is a picture of a tetralogy of fallow on the right side, the right heart. And here you have to remember four things. So tetralogy of fallow includes overriding aorta, pulmonic stenosis, ventricular septal defect and right ventricular hypertrophy. So four things to remember in tetralogy of fallow. Now the next is abnormal facies and other distinct facial features. And as I mentioned that the child may have low set of ears, short width of eye opening and much more. 
The next is intellectual disability. So the child has learning, behavioral and mental health problems. And in adulthood, patients have an increased risk for schizophrenia and Parkinson's disease. Very important to know. Next is autoimmune disorders. The patients in their adulthood would have increased risk for rheumatoid arthritis and Graves disease. Very important to know as well. Uh, the other problem, problems could be uh, hearing impairment, poor vision, breathing problems, etc. Now, how do you diagnose this disease? This is very hard to diagnose. Of course, uh, you have to look at the facial features of the patient. And uh, of course, the best diagnosis is genetic testing. And we do the genetic testing and it is normally performed using fish fluorescence in situ hybridization if you want to know more about it you can google it and there is a really good explanation in wikipedia regarding fish and uh, the next is the lab findings so in lab findings what do you see you see decreased parathyroid hormone of course we know that and because of that there is decreased calcium so problem with calcium homeostasis and there is decreased t cells so recurrent infections like uh, viral infections and fungal infections. So what is the treatment? Treatment is uh, very hard because there is no cure for Dijor syndrome. So we treat it symptomatically. So we sometimes have to do hematopoietic stem cell transplant. It's not very easy to do that, but still this is one, one of the treatment options. The other is to supplement calcium because of the less parathyroid hormone in our body. Chest x-ray of an infant with a normal thymus. Now if you focus on the right side of the picture, there is a boat and of course the boat has a sail as we have here, right? So this sail is kind of what the thymus looks in an infant, right? In the beginning. So the thymic sail sign means that it's a triangular shaped inferior margin of a normal thymus, which is seen on the chest x-ray of an infant. So on the left side of the picture, you can clearly see it's like the sail of the boat. And this is just the inferior margin of the thymus. So remember to look out for the sail sign of the thymus. And this is a proof that, okay, the child has a normal developing thymus. Now, this is a chest x-ray that shows the absence of the thymic shadow. And this is an infant a few months old. And we can clearly see here that there is no thymic shadow here. Usually, there is a thymic shadow or we call it the sailboat sign of the thymus and usually it's something like this here this is the absence of the thymic shadow now this is the last slide and this is a mnemonic called catch 22 remember to always catch the Dijor syndrome so c stands for cardiac abnormalities a for abnormal facies thymic aplasia cleft palate hypocalcemia and chromosome number 22 so with this, I finished my topic regarding Dijor syndrome. Hope you guys liked it. So thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please comment your uh, questions down below and I'll try to answer them. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe this video.